Hey folks, Anisha here, and I've got to get a feature for you to check out. So developers use project planning to help plan and track their work, and the best way to help them do this on GitHub is to use GitHub projects. So Matt, why don't you tell us more about this? Thanks, Anisha. So GitHub is the home for all developers and software teams, and all ideas start and unfold in GitHub issues. Over the years, issues have become more powerful, including video uploads and issue templates. We know that a lot of teams rely on GitHub issues and we really wanted to take them to the next level. So we introduced our new table view in GitHub projects powered by GitHub issues. So let me show you a demo. So here we have a project that I created earlier. As you can see, I've already added several issues and PRs and it's super easy to add more. I can just use the bar down the bottom here. I can hit the hash key and easily search through different repos to find the issues that I'm interested in. So we call this our table layout. And the idea here is a really data dense spreadsheet style of layout. And so for anybody who's familiar with a spreadsheet, you should find this kind of really easy to use. So I can drag and drop items around to reorganize them. I can change the size of my columns here. And most interestingly, I can start to add in custom metadata. So if I hit the plus button here, you'll see that I have an option of some different fields. So some of these include existing GitHub metadata. So let's say as a team, we, we care a lot about milestones. It's super simple for me just to add milestones in and I can start tracking them right in my table. But I can also add in completely custom fields. So if I hit the new field button here, I actually get a choice between these five different types that I can add in. So we've got text, we've got number, we've got date, we've got single select, and we've got iteration. So I can easily go in, decide what it is that as a team we care about, and just add a field for that. So I won't make you watch me um, kind of add in and populate a whole one. So here's one I prepared earlier. Um, for example, as a team, if what we really care about is priority, really easy for us to add in a single select type and populate that with kind of a different priority uh, field that we would find useful. And then similar for something like status. So really easy for me to use this single select to start communicating where are we in, the, um, in our plan and tracking flow. So once we start to add all this information in, what we wanted to do was give you different ways to be able to work with and consume that information. So I've already shown how we can drag and drop things around to reorganize this for you, but there's a couple of other really nice things here. So one of them is what we call group by. So if I bring up my command palette on command K, I can really quickly execute a group by. Let's say we'll pick priority. And what this does is it just transforms my screen into these really nice horizontal groupings. So when I'm here, it becomes super simple for me to, for example, just drag and drop between these and I can change the value. As you can imagine, for things like iteration planning or understanding priority, um, or even seeing kind of how are things assigned to different people on the team, this becomes a really powerful view to have, uh, to have that you can use. And then outside of the table, I can actually also switch to completely different layouts. So if I jump back into my command palette, one of the things I can do here is I can switch the layout to a board. So where that table has the really high data density um, and is really great for planning, maybe you want to switch over to a board and you want to kind of zoom in uh, on just a few items and kind of maybe you're tracking a sprint or you're kind of tracking a piece of work um, and you want to be able to look at it in this, this format. So just really super simple to be able to switch between the two of those. And then one more thing I did want to add around that, um, you may have noticed up here we have these different tabs. So these are what we call views. And essentially what a view allows you to do is to create a shareable um, and consistent experience against all of the modifiers that we offer you. So one of the things you'll notice is that if you look in my URL bar here, you'll see that all the different modifiers that I've applied are kind of added to that URL. So I could share that URL with someone um, and they would see exactly what I'm seeing here. However, if I want to kind of clean that URL up and make sure that this is saved between sessions, I can just hit this save change button here. And what that will do, kind of you'll notice that kind of resets my URL to just be kind of view one here. And what that does is that's actually allowed me to make this first view kind of completely different and given me something that I can share around. So as I kind of flick through these different views, we can set these up for different purposes, different reasons, 
and be able to easily share those uh, across our teams um, and make a kind of a really nice experience there. Great. Thanks so much, Matt. This was absolutely fantastic. So I've got a couple of questions for you then. Um, what makes a GitHub Projects experience so special then? I've got two more things that I want to show you here. So you can kind of think of these as power-ups um, to, the, to, to the views and layouts that we've got here, uh, where the first one is workflows. So if I click over here in the top right-hand corner, you can see our workflows tab. This is how we're helping you automate these projects. We know that automation is really important here and we want to make sure that as much as possible can just be done by, uh, by, just be done by the computer rather than you having to do it yourself. So for example, updating a status when an issue or a pull request is closed um, or changing a status when a pull request is merged. Really easy to come in here, kind of update these to be exactly what you want and kind of enable them and have those act when those criteria are met. And we've got lots more that's coming soon here. You can kind of see down the side here a little bit of a vision of where we want to go in the future with this. So really excited about the direction we're going to be able to go with workflows. And the second one is our insights tab. So this actually hasn't quite shipped to everyone yet. So you may or may not have access to this uh, right, right now. But what we can do here, we can see our burn up chart and really easy for us to kind of flick between different time frames and start to absorb and utilize the information and insights that this generates. So again, we have lots of really interesting, exciting things coming up soon here for this. We're in the early stages of building out the insight screen here, um, and I'm really excited to see where we take this in the future. So watch this space for more on the insights. Great. So thanks again, Matt. Uh, this was an absolute blast. I loved everything that you showed about GitHub projects. Uh, folks, let us know what you think about it. You can leave your comments down below, hit us up on Twitter, or leave your feedback on GitHub discussions as well. So stay tuned for more checkout videos coming your way very soon.